Ah, yes. I have two boys. Um, my oldest boy is adopted, and my youngest, my youngest son is organic. Uh, he, was, uh, he was born. Um, that's a long story, so I'm not going to tell the whole thing. But um, Doug was my youngest, and he was born large. Um, Doug was uh, 10 pounds, 10 ounces, and uh, pretty much my wife's about 5'2", and so it was, <laughs> yes, it was an ordeal. Um, now, when my, when my wife told, realized she was pregnant, she told me that um, I was going to uh, be with her in the delivery room, and I said, uh, you don't want me in the delivery room? She said, yes, I do. And I said, no, you don't. Because when I was in college, I took a class on human reproduction, and one of the things we did in there was saw a movie called How to Have a Baby in a Bomb Shelter. Okay? I'm serious. That was the name of the movie. So I went to school. I went to college in the late 60s. And so, I mean, that was a big deal. And uh, I spent, like, 90% of the movie with my head between my knees trying not to pass out or throw up. And I said, what you really don't want, you don't want, you know, the doctor looking at you, and then there's this crash, and they turn around and see me on the floor. Right. You really want to pay attention to you. And she said, you're going to be in there. And I said, okay. So we get ready to go, and, I was, and we get into the labor room. And the um, labor room is interesting because there's, uh, there's just like a bed and a screaming person. <laughs> and, and so um, my wife, like I said, very sweet person. Um, so I'm, I'm there in support. And I'm holding her hand, and every time there's a contraction, she takes my hand and pushes all my fingers into one big finger. <laughs> I'm convinced that if this goes on very long, I'm just going to look like that. You know? I'm just going to—I'm the great swimmer, but I'm not going to be able to, no opposable thumbs left. It's just <laughs> and uh, finally, she gets the epidural, and that's kind of fun. Except that epidural puts you to sleep from your navel south. I mean, your legs go numb. Everything goes numb. So she's laying on her side because Doug wasn't breathing well if she was on her back. And as the contraction comes, she can't feel it, which is very good. My hand is salvaged. But her leg starts sliding off. And she's laying on the bed. And if, she, if the leg keeps going, she's just going to go right on the floor. So I have to sit now in front of her leg. So now it's not my, my fingers are not being crushed. I'm getting kidney damage. And her knee just goes and smacks into my back. So after well, too many hours, um, the doctor comes in and says, well, it doesn't look like to, that's coming out. We're going to have to go in and get it. Now, everything changes at that point, okay? Because now it's not having a baby. It's having an operation. I have had operations. I understand operations, okay? So that's kind of fun, right? I'm looking forward to this. And we're going there. And they do all their prep work stuff. And this is serious. It takes about 45 seconds from the time they make the first incision until they're holding my son. Now, they thought my son was going to be eight and a half pounds. As they pull out this 10 pound, 10 ounce, this goes, whoa. Now, fortunately, my wife at this point is reacting kind of goofily to the anesthesia. And so she has no remembrance of any of this. She's just shivering like crazy. And that's a good thing because. When they take the baby out, they lay Doug on her, and she can't even hold him, so I have to hold him first, and then they lay her back, and, and while, but then they start sewing her up, okay, because they have to, they cut her open, all right, and so I'm watching this, because it's pretty interesting. Now, you can't tell my wife about, she does not know this, okay? I'm serious, this, this, she has never heard this part of the story, <clears throat> so... The doctor's sewing, it's this white tissue, and he's sewing it together. And so I say, you know, innocently, oh, is that the superficial fascia? He stops, looks over his little mask, and says, what'd you do, read up on this to make sure I'm doing it right? And I said, no, it just looks a lot like the superficial fascia on the pigs we dissect. And he says, <laughs> and he says uh, well, actually, no, this isn't the superficial fascia. And he goes, and so he starts teasing stuff away from up by the, where the cut is on the skin. He says, superficial face is way up here. And, and he says, uh, 
He says, what I'm telling is the deep fashion. He just starts probing around. Uh-oh, somebody's ringing. Is that me? It is me. Heaven. <laughs> hold, just hold that thought. Amanda, I have to call you back. Okay, I'm in the middle of story time. 514. Room 514, the lab. Okay. Bye. Be sure your sins will find you out. Okay. Um, now, I think that's the end of that story. Doug is born, right? Okay, my wife's sewn up. Good. Here we go.